Hey guys and welcome to the review of Batman Cape Crusader the new Batman show on Amazon Prime that I actually reacted to the trailer and said how much it looks like Batman the Animated Series and yes I still very much adore Batman the Animated Series in fact it's together with the whole DCAU actually got a you should be watching treatment like almost a year ago at this point but yes, I still very much adore Batman the Animated Series and when I reacted to this trailer of Batman Cape Crusader I thought it looked pretty good and interesting and I was very much on board with the show. But what did I think about it? But first before we get to it, I will say it again, I don't actually have Amazon Prime, like I refuse to give them <laughs> any of the money after <laughs> the rings of trash, but my sister has, so yes, when there is something on Amazon Prime I want to watch, I generally use her account because she lets me. So yes, I did see Batman Creep Crusader, and what did I think of it? I liked it. Yep, I am going to say it. I actually liked it, and I was entertained as I was binging all the 10 episodes, and... So yes, I did really overall like the show, and I had a good time, but is it perfect? Nope, not by any means, and I'm going to go into details now why. First I will say this, it's nowhere near as good as Batman the Animated Series, nowhere close. In fact, as you're watching the show, sometimes at least I had this feeling that mm, I've seen it before but better, but it does change the fact that it's still overall good, but nowhere near as good as Batman the Animated Series, but then again that's such a high bar that it would be very high expectation for anyone to even expect it will come close. But is it though, could it be considered though a worthy successor of Batman the Animated Series? Well, I guess it could if not for a few things. First, I will say that I did like the animation because I do actually know that some people don't like the animation saying it's like too simple and doesn't have like so much detail at all. But I admit, I actually kind of like that animation is so plain and simple. I actually think it fits perfectly with this show, especially that this show, the style is kind of considered, supposed to be considered like retro style, so yes, the simple and play animation I actually like it, I actually think it fits perfectly with the show's aesthetic, and also I really love the tone, like they were promising this dark neon war tone and it's very much there and I really love that, so yes, the animation and the overall tone and the atmosphere of the show is also pretty good and I and although I do kind of miss Kevin Conroy, I at the same time think that the new actor that voices Batman does a really good job and he actually is very much a worthy successor to Kevin Conroy and I also do like the Batman in this show and his new suit and all. And yes, I'm glad that although there are several episodes where Batman does feel, kind of feel like he's sidelined most of the time I think. He thankfully very much is his own character in his own show like it should be and it's very good and I also love the storytelling format because this is very much like a monster of the week format like almost every episode focuses on a different case or and Batman is trying to figure out and I really love that like yeah I actually really love monster of the week format and I'm glad this show is using it especially that Batman is very much perfect for that type of storytelling format I mean maybe subsequent seasons will evolve more into like a ongoing storyline, but for now at least I think that the Monster of the Week story format I think is perfect. And I also really like Jim Gordon, I think he's also a very greatly done character in this show and I like, for example, there's this great scene how initially Jim Gordon actually doesn't is distrustful of Batman and does like him, especially that most of the law enforcement is very much against Batman, but then they're in this firehouse and Jim Gordon sees Batman rescuing two children and then he learns about Batman's true nature and becomes friends with him and also chooses to cover for him. I think this is a perfect way to establish how they become allies and all that. And again, as I said, I think overall Jim Gordon is a really great, done, greatly done character here and I really like Jim Gordon. He's probably my second favorite character here after Batman Bruce Wayne in this show. And in general, every almost every episode was very interesting and I was interesting where it was going and Yep, almost every every Villain of the Week storyline I thought was very well done and I was pretty much hooked in through and through. Okay, now it probably seems I'm very much praising the show, but 
if you think they don't there aren't any negatives wrong there are actually negatives and now we're going to talk about them like some, plenty of people are probably asking especially when we learned the news about penguin which we will talk about but lots of people probably asking is the show woke like I generally don't like discussing this stuff like I try to avoid politics on my channel but when it is in a short movie then I have to call it out because it's there so I'm not going to not talk about it if it's there I will call it out so is the show woke kinda yep it strongly has some elements of it like the fact that they changed Penguin to a female and named him Oswald a Cobblepot like what like why couldn't you just stick with who the penguin is like why not just create an original female crime boss like why take a pre-existing character and then change him to something that he's not like again this is the very first episode and I can't even say it's a bad episode in and of itself and I can't even say that uh, that she even is a bad villain like but why does it have to be a new rendition of the penguin why not just create a new or new crime boss Oh well, and then there is this other character villain that's very much changed, and that's Harley Quinn. Like, they originally she was like Joker's psychologist who then falls in love with him and starts worshiping him and becomes like kind of like he he's an abusive boyfriend. Where Harley Quinn just loves the Joker despite the fact that he constantly abuses her, but here she absolutely has no connection with the Joker, and I mean. Again, I don't think she's actually a bad villain on herself, like, it's actually an overall pretty interesting episode and I was interested, but at the same time, like, why again not create a new character? Like, Harley Quinn being obsessed with the Joker is basically an essential part of her character, like, why create an entirely new... Why just basically name, give the character the same name and kind of similar look and then basically almost completely change everything about her, I guess with the exception about being a psychologist, because she still is a psychologist, so I guess that I'll give them credit, but overall, maybe Harley Quinn should actually not even be in the show in the first place, because newsflash, Harley Quinn I know was actually created for Batman the Animated Series, like she's an original character of Batman the Animated Series, and this is supposed to be like a retro Batman, like taking Batman to the days of early comic days, like 30s, 40s, and in some ways maybe, not having Harley Quinn at all, but have the Joker alone could actually work. It would then make it, it would actually further make it far more immersive and further bring you to the days of the old comics back. Like, like, yeah, as I said, Harley Quinn wasn't in, even in the old comics, so just having the Joker instead and no Harley Quinn at all, at all in the show would actually work better, even in my opinion, because as I said, it would make it more immersive and bring further to the days of the old comics. Oh well. But the villain I think has been done great justice is Two-Face. Like Two-Face has always been my second favorite Batman villain only after the Joker. And I think Two-Face has very much been done justice. And I also like how he in, in how initially actually in the first few episodes he's just introduced us Harvey Dent. Kind of like Batman the Animated Series also did the same way and because then it makes his transformation Two-Face far more tragic. So, yes, Two-Face, one of my favorite Batman villains, he's been done great justice and I really love that. And another episode I really loved was there is episode that of the 18th century ghost that uh, that has to be banished and then he possesses Alfred and Batman has saved Alfred, yes. That is actually another one of my favorite episodes of the show. Overall, I really enjoyed Batman Caped Crusader. I thought overall it was a really nice neo-noir Batman show with <laughs> really interesting Monster of the Week stories. Although I won't pretend like there wasn't anything cringy about it because there very much was. It would be foolish to deny it. But at the same time it didn't really ruin the show for me. The show still overall was really good and I am looking forward to season 2. So for now, do I recommend Batman Caped Crusader? I think if you can look past some of the cringy things I've been talking about, I think you really should enjoy Batman Caped Crusader, especially if you're a Batman fan. It's nowhere near as good as Batman the Animated Series, but then again, 
that's uh, such a high bar, almost impossible to clear. I think that Batman Cape Crusader should still overall satisfy you. So, thank you all of you for checking out this video. Press the like button, please subscribe to this channel, and I will talk to you soon in another video. Talk to you then, bye!